Hi everybody, this is Jamie with the NetZoom team, and I'm here today to talk to you about NetZoom Basic. We will be covering the NetZoom software and services and have a live demonstration of the product. NetZoom Basic is an intuitive hardware asset management solution to manage data center infrastructure, facility infrastructure, and audio video infrastructure for small data centers or network rooms. It is popular among data center professionals, network professionals, system administrators, consultants, and other solution providers. These professionals use NetZoom Basic to model and manage device infrastructure, connectivity, and cabling in racks, cabinets, and shelves. NetZoom Basic is used to generate reports and Visio diagrams. There are many benefits of NetZoom Basic. NetZoom Basic is powered by the world's largest device library with over 450,000 devices from more than 5,600 manufacturers. We update this device library every single week with the newest and latest equipment that is out there. NetZoom Basic will allow you to track your complete inventory life cycle. This means from the time that you receive the device until way after you decommission it. We also give you the ability to create smart builds and configure models of your devices to match your real life equipment and then save them as a catalog to make your asset deployment even easier and quicker. We have not only 2D, but also 3D visualization, and you can even manage warranty and service contracts. As mentioned before, NetZoom Basic allows you to have that true port-to-port -port connectivity of your devices, really showing the true life connections and allowing you to trace and check for power redundancy and single points of failure. You can then auto-generate row diagrams and rack elevations right into Visio with all of the proper properties and cable connections, as well as generate many reports that are already built right inside the application and dashboards as well. So let's talk a little bit about NetZoom as a company. NetZoom Inc. was formerly known as Ultima Technologies. We were established in 1995 and recently changed our name to NetZoom Inc. in the year 2018. We are the leader of DSUM solutions before DSUM was a term. And not only are we the leader in network and data center infrastructure management enterprise solutions, but we have half a million users worldwide from a variety of different business sectors. We work with some of the largest hardware manufacturers in the industry, and we are partners with Microsoft, Intel, VMware, Hyper-V, ServiceNow, Remedy, and many, many more. NetZoom Basic is a SaaS application, which means that you will be logging into it from your service portal at service.netzoom.com. To access your service portal, please go to https service.netzoom.com. You will need to enter in your email address and password. If this is your very first time ever logging in, please choose Forgot Password in order to change it from the default. Once you have entered in your information, click the Submit button. There are many different features of your NetZoom service portal, but the most important one that we will cover today is your NetZoom basic SaaS application. To launch your SaaS application, simply click the SaaS feature underneath your services menu. It will launch in another tab, so make sure that you've allowed your pop-up blockers. Once you have your NetZoom Basic SaaS application launched, you will notice that you have many different menu options to use for your diagramming needs. On your home menu, you have home dashboards. These are just fun little pie charts to provide you with additional information about what's going on inside your application. They can be easily exported out to a PDF and then included in reports or PowerPoint presentations 
or even provide to your customers. So to begin with, first we're going to focus on how to track your assets inside the application. There is so much that this application can do, including building out rooms and plots and sites and data and power trace connections and everything that we've gone over previously. But let's look at how to actually get our stuff in there. And to do that, we're going to go to the inventory menu. Our inventory menu allows you to track the entire asset lifecycle of your device using our new devices, old devices, and disposed devices feature. Your new devices feature is like your storage room. You simply click on the feature, right click on your inventory, and add new group if you wish to do so. Once you have created your group, simply click on the device's quick action and search for the device that you just received. Press the arrow and locate your results. As I expand out Dell Computer, I'm able to locate the server that I just received. As you can see, I have received the two and a half inch drive PowerEdge R710. I can change the name of it if I wish to do so and even change the quantity. Let's say that my company has received two of these servers in from procurement. I can then go ahead and add them to my new devices feature, which is the same as placing them inside my storage room. I can either right click on each individual device or click up here and approve all of them. Now that I've approved these devices, I am ready to place them live into my production. Once I have placed them live into my production, they will automatically remove themselves from the inventory menu. As I remove them from my production, they will place themselves in old devices and then allow me to go even further and place them into disposed devices. This allows me to keep the entire asset life cycle. Another very important section of your inventory menu is your smart builds, configured models, and basic models feature groups. The features with inside these feature groups will allow you to create templates of your devices and save them so you can use them over and over again throughout your entire application and never have to reconfigure them again. It creates kind of like a catalog of your assets. So to start out with this section, we're going to cover the configured models feature group first. So to start building our catalog of assets, let's first start with our configured models feature. Simply right click and add a new group if you wish to do so. Once you have done this, you may click on the device's quick action to access the library. Of As you can see here, I'm going to search for the R710 today. Once I press my blue arrow, I can expand out Dell Computer. I have many different versions of this server, such as a two and a half inch drive, three and a half inch drive, and a closed view. The NetZoom library also provides you with not only filled views, but blank views of all the chassis. I'm going to drag over the front filled view of this server. I can change the name if I wish to do so. And press save. Now that it's added my server, I can easily expand out the front and rear view to access all the different ports as well as slots. I can change any information I wish to do so in my properties quick action here, such as my port name. I can even click on my different slots here and it will highlight them for me to let me know where I'm at in my server at all times. If I go back to my device's quick action, I can easily choose that related tab to access all the cars and modules that are currently related to this device underneath this manufacturer. So for example, so let's say that we want to take this card today. We'll simply grab it and drag and drop it into the slot where we want to add it. Once I click on my server and go back to the properties quick action, 
I can see that my server has now updated with that new card. Once my device is configured the way that I need it to be, I simply right click on it and choose approve. Now it's ready to use in my inventory menus and live in my production. Smart builds allow you to create a catalog of racks and enclosures to use throughout your application as many times as you wish without having to rebuild them. To begin building a smart build, simply click on the smart build feature. You may right click and add a new group if you wish to do so. Then go to the device's quick action to access all of the racks and enclosures with inside the NetZoom library. Press your blue arrow once you place in the rack that you need, expand out, and grab the front or rear view of that rack and drag it over to the group of your choice. You may change the name if you wish to do so. Once you have added your rack, you are now ready to go to your models quick action to start adding those configured models. Simply drop down the configured models, press the arrow, and you will have all of your different models that you have currently approved here ready for use. I'm going to drag the front view of the server over and add it to the front of my rack. I will mount it to both sides, which means it will place the opposite side of the server on the opposite side of the rack. Should I have needed to, I could always right click and swap views and make any alterations that I may need to. NetZoom also allows you to add zero RU devices such as PDUs and cameras. Simply grab this PDU, for example, and drop it onto a rack unit. I'm going to uncheck the mount to both sides checkbox as I would not be able to see the other side of the PDU as it will be covered by the rack bar. I am going to check that I'm mounting a zero RU device and choose whether I want to place it on the right or the left of the rack. I can even change my angle of rotation should I wish to do so. NetZoom also allows you to add things to the top of your racks as well. And as we look at the preview pane of this rack, just like that server, as we click, it will highlight where we are in the application at all times on that asset. The preview pane is similar throughout the entire application with the front, rear views, top views, and even your 3D views available to you. Once your smart build is done being configured, simply right click on it and choose approve. Now you are ready to use this rack configuration throughout your entire application. So now that we have placed devices in your storage room or also known as your inventory new feature, we have made configured models and smart builds of devices to use throughout the entire application. It is time to get the information into the data center. So with inside my data center menu, I have my edit data center feature. If I click on this feature, it will provide me with all the quick actions I need to build out my entire data center with connections and run power and data traces and everything I would need to manage it. As you can see here, I already have my building and my plot and my room and all my different devices. And we will show you how to build out the building later on when we move on to more advanced features. But for right now, I'm going to go ahead and just close this up and let's start from the beginning. So to create a logical location, I would simply right click up here on my site and choose add location. Give my location a name such as a row or a cage and press save. Now that I have my row, I can go ahead and choose the library quick action and search the entire library of devices. This is in case I need to add something that maybe was not in my inventory menu or I chose not to use that inventory feature and just do all of my diagramming right here live in my edit data center feature. I do my diagramming the exact same way throughout the entire application. So now that I have my rack added here, I can keep searching the entire library of all my devices and keep adding them to my rack, just like I did in Smart Builds earlier. Or 
I can go to my device's quick action and access my inventory, new, old, dispose, or configured models and smart builds. As mentioned before, inventory is just like your storage room, which means that if I click on inventory new and press my arrow, I have these different servers that I previously placed into my storage room because my company recently just received in three of them. Now, just like a real live storage room, if you take something out of the storage room and you place it live in production, like we are the server, it will remove it from your storage room, just like it removed it here. If I right click and I remove it off my rack, it will automatically place it back into my inventory, but add it to old, as so we know that this device was already used. So not only can we pull devices onto this rack and other racks as well, from our library as a brand new device, as well as our inventory new, but we can also use this device's quick action to access our configured models and smart builds. So let's say we want to access the smart build rack with a server and a PDU on it that was previously already diagrammed. We can simply choose the rack, grab the front view of it, and drag and drop it onto the row. I can give my rack a new name if I wish to do so, and press save. Now it'll go ahead and instantly add that rack for me with the configuration that I already previously made in my smart builds. So now that we have diagrammed our assets with inside the application, the next most important thing may be to start your connectivity. So let's go ahead and move on to how to make a cable and how easy it is to make a connection with inside the NetZoom application. Cables must be created with inside the inventory menu under the basic models feature group. Simply click on the basic device models feature and you may right click and add a new group should you wish to do so. For the purpose of today's presentation, I'm going to go ahead and use the demo cable group. If I simply click on the device's quick action, I can search my entire library for cable models. I happen to know that there are a couple under the manufacturer NetZoom that we made for generic cables for our customers use. If I simply click on this arrow, I can go ahead and expand out NetZoom and see a couple default cables. So let's first look at this power cable together today. Simply take the front view of it and drag and drop it in. Once I press save, it'll instantly add my cable with a one to one ratio, which means that on the front side of the cable, I have one port and on the rear, I have another. I can easily change these port names by going to the property quick action, clicking in the name field and changing them to be whatever I wish. As soon as I click out of that field, it will instantly update the name for me. So now that you've seen how easy it is to make a power cable, let's go ahead and move on to copper and fiber. So I'm going to go ahead and click back on my device's quick action and choose this copper cable right here today. I'm going to simply drag and drop it over into my demo cable group. Once I add it, there are a few more properties that I need to fill out. As you can see, the cable type will automatically default to copper. I can then define custom ports if I want to change the name of my ports at this time or if I want to add additional ports. We'll go over this feature when we add a fiber cable. Now that I have my copper cable, I can simply expand it out and see that one to one ratio. And just like my power cable, I can instantly change any of the information right within my properties. The other thing you can add inside your properties are such things as your color of your cable and length and width. This color is going to debate what comes out in your Microsoft Visio diagrams and also on your reports. So now to move on to fiber cables, we will simply click the device's quick action and search for a trunking cable. As you can see, the one that we have here is 48 channels on both sides, totaling 96 all together. So I'm going to simply drag and drop it into my demo cable group. I need to change the cable type to fiber. 
And then I can click here to define my custom ports. All of our cables give a one-to-one -one ratio, allowing your customers to create the ports to be anything that they wish. So I simply go ahead and type in any name that I want for my connections on both sides and the number. Press my green plus sign and click save. Now when I expand this cable out, you'll see that I have all of my different connectors right here available and ready for me to use. So now that I have my cables, I can simply right click on each individual cable or the entire group and choose approve. All cables must be approved before they can be used for connections in your data center menu. Once you have created cables with inside your application and saved them under the inventory menu, simply go back to data center, edit data center, and start making your connections. To make a connection, the first thing that we will do is expand down our rack and find a device where we want to make a connection, such as this server here. I'm going to simply go over to my quick actions of power or data, in this case, power, and the instructions are literally right here on the screen for you. We try to make NetZoom as easy as possible. So we'll just simply right click, add to left hand pane, go find our other device, such as a PDU here on the rear view of this rack today, and right click and add to the opposite pane. I simply then click on two connections here it will highlight it for me, let me know where I'm located inside the application at all times on my device. And then I simply click connect and choose from my different cables. So let's say we want to choose that default cable right here for our power. We can have it run through the ceiling or on the floor, but just simply click select and it will make the connection instantly. If I want to switch over to data, I simply switch to data quick action here and click my data connections. So let's say that I want to add a new device such as this switch. Simply right click and replace it in the pane where I want to continue making connections. I can then go ahead and keep connecting up my different connections here by simply clicking on one port, clicking on the other and choosing this button right here to connect them. Once I choose my cable, such as our copper cable we created today, I simply hit select and my connections have been made. Now let's focus on fiber connections. So to do a fiber connection, I'm going to right click and add this switch to my left hand pane. I'm going to go ahead and then go up to the above rack where I happen to have a panel located. I'm going to expand it out and add it to the right hand pane. As you can see, my Copper ports are in red and my fiber ports are in blue. All of our patch panels also have internal patch panel connectivity already inside the application for you if it's a one to one ratio. But with this, I can simply click one port, click the other one as it highlights that port in red for me. I can press this link button right here and choose my cable, such as that cable that we created earlier today. I can simply see on it where I want to go ahead and make my connections. So for example, we see over here on this port, which is this one right here, what part of the cable do we want to use? Let's say we want to use connector number five. But on this part here, this connector, what port do we want to use? Let's say number three. Then I would go ahead and press select to instantly make this connection. Now, if I want to go ahead and continue making connections, I could either just simply click on the next port if it needed to connect to this exact same port or choose another port and keep connecting with that same cable. Once you have all of your assets with inside your application and you have your connections completed, the most important thing to you at this point in time might be how to get this information out of NetZoom and generate those data and power trace diagrams. Remember, power trace diagrams can help you check for single points of failure and power redundancy issues. To generate a power trace or data trace, simply choose the device that you want to trace and choose the trace quick action. Click on power or network 
to go ahead and see your power redundancy, single points of failure, or a network trace to see your entire connections. There are many other ways to get information out of the system as well, such as our reports quick action. Our reports quick actions have many different reports all throughout the application on many different entity types. If I was to click on a row, rack, room, you'll notice that my reports will constantly and always change. I can easily click on the equipment profile report, for example, and click run. This will instantly create a PDF. With inside this rack equipment profile report, I have the front and rear view of my rack, all the information and devices on my rack, as well as those cards and modules, and even all of my connections from rack to rack and different locations, including the cable length, type, and color. You may also generate row diagrams and rack elevations right inside a Microsoft Visio with your NetZoom Visio add-in that is included free with your NetZoom subscription. To obtain the setup files for the NetZoom Visio add-in, simply go back to your service portal at service.netzoom.com. With inside your download feature, you will locate setup files for both 32-bit and 64-bits. To go ahead and see what bit version your Microsoft Visio is, so that way you make sure to install the correct bit version that matches your Microsoft Visio application and not your computer, simply open up Visio, create a blank drawing, go back to File, and Account. As you can see here, I have Microsoft Visio Professional 2013. The NetZoom Visio add-in is compatible with Microsoft Visio Professional 2013 and higher, both 32 or 64. If I click About Visio at the very end of the first line, it'll tell me if it's a 32-bit or a 64-bit. This will tell me then to go ahead and install the 64-bit as my Visio also matches that as well. Once you've installed your NetZoom Visio add-in, you may launch it straight from your Start menu as a standalone application or as an add-in with inside of Microsoft Visio. Today I'm going to go ahead and launch Microsoft Visio and create a blank drawing. If I click on the add-ins feature right here, I can then see my NetZoom Visio add-in and add it right into the left-hand pane of Microsoft Visio. Now, since I'm on NetZoom Basic, I am on a SaaS application. So I want to go ahead and place in the same email address and password that I use to log into my service portal with. NetZoom will instantly be open on the left-hand side where I can then adjust it to fit my needs. Now that I have everything here, I can simply and easily expand out that entire building that you saw or those racks that we built together earlier, and I can generate row and rack diagrams simply by clicking on my row and choosing the different racks I may want within my diagram. To generate that diagram, simply click on the very first icon here and choose from one of the many different templates. Using my NetZoom Visio add-in, I can then generate beautiful diagrams that include all of the properties from right with inside your NetZoom application on all of the devices and all of my connections with the proper cable properties and colors. So during this demonstration, you have been shown how to place your devices inside the NetZoom application, make cables, make connections, build catalogs of assets to reuse over and over again, and then generate power, data trace, reports, and Visio diagrams to get all of the information outside the application. So let's go ahead and move now onto the more advanced features, such as building out this plot, building, and room. Now please do remember NetZoom Basic is a SaaS application and it is also a single site application. If you are looking for multiple sites, please contact our sales department at sales at netzoom.com. To start designing your building, you will need to go to the administration menu, enterprise configuration, sites. Now, as mentioned before, NetZoom Basic is a single site application, which means it can only have one plot, but it can have many different buildings. So as you can see, we already have this one building sitting here on our plot, 
but let's say we want to add more. Simply click on your plot and choose the Quick Action building. Give your new building a name, like Chicago for instance. Provide it with a height and you may change the color if you wish to do so. Once you press save, it will go ahead and tell you that this building is not drawn yet by providing you with that red X. When you click on it, you'll see on your plot where the other building exists. You may then go ahead and simply draw out your building and you can draw the square to be as big or as small as you'd like and then you may always come over here and change the coordinates. Once you have it completed the way that you would like your building to be, simply click Save. As you click Save, in the exact same spot as the building quick action is, will be your levels quick action. This will be your floors. So as I go ahead and add a floor one here, I can press Save and I can keep adding additional levels or floors if I wish to do so by simply clicking the levels quick action. But for the purpose of today, we will just leave it as one floor. If I click here on floor one, I can then go ahead and use the quick action room to add my different rooms such as my data center or lab. If I add my data center room, I simply click save and then it will request for me to draw it out just like it did the building. Simply click on your room and expand the box out where it sits on your floor. Once you've created your data center room, simply click save. If you want it to alter these different floors here, you may certainly do so with inside the property name field, or you can even remove one of them should you wish to do so. Let's say you don't have a subfloor in your environment, simply click that red X and click yes, and it will instantly remove it to match your building's environmental configuration. If you would like to add additional rooms, you most certainly can do so by re-clicking on your floor and choosing the room quick action again. You may add as many rooms as you want. Just like the data center room, you will need to click on your lab room and draw it out. The yellow box above is where the data center is currently sitting. Once you press save, you can go ahead and start your diagramming inside your data center and moving those different logical locations that we created earlier, like our rows, into your proper rooms and floor area locations. But if you wish, you could go further inside of your sites feature by adding walls to all of your rooms. Walls will allow you to go ahead and place security key code touchpads, cameras in wall patch panels, and even doors, windows, and fans. That way you get that real life feel for how your building truly looks and where your equipment really is inside your application. I would like to thank everybody for their time today and joining us for this NetZoom basic training. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact our support department. And if you're interested in our higher end applications, such as NetZoom Professional or NetZoom Enterprise, please contact us at sales at netzoom.com. Have a wonderful day.